But there's a big, big lie that's been growing on the earth, especially over the last 10, 20 years, where people are teaching that because God is a loving God, he will not punish people. People say, if God is loving, then there's no way he would create a hell. There's no way he would punish people. He's loving. Maybe in the Old Testament, he used to be that way, but in the New Testament, no, 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 it's, it's changed. And God, you guys, ever since the beginning of this book, God has made it clear that he's a God of judgment. Soon after he created man, he cursed the earth. He cursed Adam and Eve for their disobedience. Soon after that, in Genesis, the first book of the Bible, in the sixth chapter, it says that God looked at the man, the, the, the people on the earth and goes, gosh, they're so evil. It says that God looked at the people he made and it grieved him that he ever even made these people because they were so evil. So he decides to flood the earth and kill everyone on the planet except for Noah and his family. See, sometimes when we read the Bible and we've been taught these stories, we only look at one part of it. Like, like a lot of you, maybe when you grew up, your parents painted Noah's Ark in your nursery. You know, you saw pictures of Noah's Ark and it's so cute, the sun's shining, a couple of giraffes stick their head out the window, right? And an old man, a little bird on his shoulder, elephants. And it's like so cute, but I'm guessing they didn't paint the millions of people who were drowning under the water. He did in, in your nursery? <laughs> your parents did that? that that's, that's great. You know, I'm guessing because we like to not talk about his judgment. But I'm telling you, if you read this book, read it sometime. God's a God of judgment. He doesn't bluff. He told Pharaoh, hey, you better let my people go. Or you know what? I'll kill the firstborn of every household in Egypt. And then he did it. He says, you better let my people go. Let them pass through that dry land. And they didn't, so God just covered them over and wiped them out. Read this book sometime. God doesn't bluff. God's not like some of our parents who said, don't you do that again, or I'll count to three again. <laughs> Read this book. He doesn't bluff. You guys, and the Bible says, and I'm not saying I love this thought. I don't like it, but the Bible makes it clear in Revelation chapter 20 when it talks about the end, the end of all things. In Revelation 20, he talks about Satan, the, the, the devil. And, and it says in, in verse, um, verse 10, it says, the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophet were and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. He says there is a lake of fire. He says one day the enemy, Satan himself, is gonna be thrown in there to be tormented day and night forever and ever. But then a few verses later in verse 15, it says if anyone's name was not found in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. So he says, not only is Satan gonna be thrown in there, but he says anyone whose name was not written in the book of life was thrown into that lake of fire. See, I know some of you right now, I just lost you. You go, I don't wanna believe that. I don't want to believe that. I refuse to believe that. And, that's your choice. I'm just reading. I didn't write this. Okay? I didn't write the book of Revelation. I wrote a little bit of Leviticus, but, but I didn't write Revelation. I'm kidding. I didn't, this is just what God says. And again, I'm telling you, just read it sometime. And, and then don't get me wrong, I, I, don't, I don't really like some of these passages. There are a lot of things in this book that honestly I don't like, that I wouldn't have written, 
There are many things in this book that I disagree with. But when I disagree with this book, I assume that I'm wrong and that he's right. And I come under those passages and surrender those passages, even if they're uncomfortable to me. Because I go, you know what, just like the Bible says, his ways are higher than my ways. Isaiah 55 says his thoughts are so far, just like the heavens that we were talking about earlier are above the earth. He goes, that's where my thoughts are compared to yours. And so when I disagree with something, I go, God, I don't get it. You're, you're just beyond me. So I'm going to take your word for it, even though that's not what I would have come up with. But to me, it makes sense. I mean, I understand. I understand, it makes perfect logic to me that if there's a God who made all of this and just like he destroyed it all in in Genesis six and if he says that we're disobedient, man, he has the right to punish us. And a lot of people say, well, a, 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 a loving God wouldn't punish and I'm saying, you don't understand, a righteous God can't ignore a crime. He has to mind his, his love and his righteousness go together. Yes, he loves us, but he's also a righteous God, a fair God. And because he's perfectly righteous, he can't just let you sin and do nothing about it. So that makes sense to me. Even hell, the thought of the lake of fire, though I don't like it, though I may think it's extreme, it makes sense. It makes sense. 